بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈی اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک آف پیریٹونائٹس لاسٹ ٹائم وی ڈسکس جنرل اورینٹیشن اینڈ جنرل انٹروڈکشن آف ایکیوٹ ایپ ڈامن وی ڈسکس دا ڈفرینٹ کازز آف ایکیوٹ ایپ ڈامن اینڈ دیئر کلینیکل پریزنٹیشن ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دا پیریٹونائٹس دیئر ٹائپس دیئر کلینیکل پریزنٹیشنس Uh, diagnosis, complication, treatment. Okay. What's peritonitis? It is inflammatory condition of the peritoneum and it can be localized or generalized. Acute inflammatory condition of peritoneum is called peritonitis. Any irritation to the peritoneal cavity is called peritonism. So it's a sign of peritonitis. Refer to the specific feature found on abdominal examination and those with called peritonitis mean irritation to the peritoneal cavity means some signs are there which reflects there's irritation to the peritoneal cavity. Generalized peritonitis is a surgical emergency and it required urgent resuscitation and surgical treatment most of the time. What are the different types of uh, peritonitis mean localized or generalized peritonitis? Localized in any irritation or inflammation in a localized part of abdominal cavity, we call it localized peritonitis. Like acute appendicitis, acute cholecystitis, diverticulitis, any localized inflammatory process which irritate the peritoneum is called localized peritonitis. Okay. Similarly, sometimes there is a perforation of appendicitis and it, the infection is limited to the right eyelid fossa. In spite of the perforation, it is a localized peritonitis. And once the perforation uh, the, is spread to the uh, inflammation spread to the whole of the abdominal cavity, is called generalized peritonitis mean signs of peritoneal irritation or peritonism they are present all over the abdomen there's mold like rigidity guarding all present all over the abdomen if there's early perforation of the uh, appendix duodenal ulcer perforation typhoid perforation there were so many causes so that lead to peritonitis is called generalized peritonitis and localized peritonitis the signs the pain the tenderness the reboundedness the guarding the rigidity is limited to that specified part but in generalized per these features are present all over the abdomen so then primary and secondary peritonitis primary peritonitis once the inflammation start de novo in the peritoneal cavity Uh, means some uh, in, uh, immunocompromised patient, there is inflammatory emission, tuberculous peritonitis. So in condition, can the, so it's rare, but secondary peritonitis is common. Secondary bacterial peritonitis due to the perforation of hollow viscous is the commonest variety of acute peritonitis. Whenever we use the term peritonitis without any additional qualification, it is to be taken as secondary bacterial peritonitis. Okay, please, whenever we use the term peritonitis without any additional qualification, it is to be taken as secondary bacterial peritonitis. Mean peritonitis resulting from the perforation of hollow viscous, either it is a appendicular perforation, perforation of due to typhoid, small bowel perforation, duodenal ulcer perforation, stomach perforation, diverticular perforation, large gut perforation, all lead to their secondary bacterial peritonitis. Then we classify the peritonitis according to the cause after trauma, after perforation of the hollow viscous, after ascending infection, in female and so on and so forth mean depending upon the cause 
then acute and chronic perforation peritonitis mostly it's acute peritonitis because of the perforation of the hollow viscous trauma but like uh, there are certain condition which like tuberculous peritonitis uh, most of the time the presentation is chronic presentation mean there's a chronic ill health abdominal aches this distension pain and there's a feature are uh, like chronic inflammation ascending infection particularly in female and young girls the streptococcal infection the ascending infection uh, sometimes is fatal peritonitis SBP spontaneous bacterial peritonitis especially in the patient with ascites um, cirrhosis and the neonatal peritonitis is uh, by meconium ileus leading to meconium peritonitis and uh, that need urgent treatment so as we discussed in the last lecture list of causes of acute abdomen that includes the peritonitis as well the so causes of acute abdomen the sources are intestinal gi hepatobiliary muscular urological gynecological and not surgical non abdominal causes also intestinal acute appendicitis again the top most cause mesenteric adenitis meckel's diverticulitis perforated peptic ulcer gastroenteritis diverticulitis intestinal obstruction and strangulated hernias can lead to acute abdomen hepatobiliary biliary colic cholecystitis cholangitis pancreatitis hepatitis vascular causes ruptured aortic abdominal aortic aneurysm it is a catastrophe it is a very uh, acute surgical emergency and need urgent resuscitation in operation room acute mesenteric ischemia and ischemic colitis urological renal colic uti pyelonephritis testicular torsion acute urinary retention gynecological cause again very important ectopic ruptured pregnancies cyst pathology like ruptured cyst hemorrhagic cyst or torsion of the cyst salpingitis endometriosis mitral schimmer syndrome generally the medical cause is non surgical cause which mimic like acute abdomen like basal pleurisy in pneumonia inferior wall ischemia diabetic ketoacidosis sickle cell crisis as we discussed in the last lecture and porphyria so the general list of acute abdominal condition causes of generalized peritonitis infective bacteria causes peritonitis due to gangrene or the perforation of the skin as we all know the, there is a gut barrier protective barrier the gut mucosal barrier is very important because the gi tract is loaded with lot of microorganism they are abundant in number and many in varieties so they are virulent organism they are held in check by gut mucosal barrier once the gut is healthy viable these organisms are held under check cannot cross this mucosal barrier and enter into the either circulation or peritoneal cavity which is sterile normally but what happens whenever there is a, a non viability of the gut barrier mean due to gangrene or the perforation these organisms which are normally present in the lumen of the intestine which enters into the peritoneal cavity or generalized circulation leading to uh, peritonitis and ultimately septicemia so appendicitis diverticulitis peptidic ulcer this is the most common cause of peritonitis uh, typhoid perforation duodenal ulcer perforation appendicitis perforation so and then the trauma the penetrating trauma blunt trauma rupture of the gut can lead to peritonitis so normally or whenever the condition increase for period of time there is a gut barrier is compromised and the transmigration of the bacteria from the gut into the peritoneal cavity 
lead to septis. That is the cause of uh, SVP, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. So infective causes are bacteria and the source is mostly the alimentary tract. Non-infectives, there's the chemical peritonitis in the start, leakage of certain sterile body fluids into the peritoneum can cause peritonitis. This peritonitis is called uh, chemical peritonitis in the start to start with but very soon the mi microorganisms invade and they, this is no more a sterile this become a bacterial peritonitis so examples are peptic ulcer perforation like gastric juice bile urine pancreatic juices blood in the blood trauma ruptured ovarian cyst Although it's sterile in the first few hours, but soon it becomes Or the duodenum or the upper small bowel, there are less microorganisms. It's mostly the irritant as we're talking about duodenal perforation happens. can lead to severe peritonitis. Acute inflammatory response occurs once the, uh, the content escapes into the peritoneal cavity. It leads to acute inflammatory response. Lot of exudation of the fluid which is rich in protein. There is opsonization, fibrinogen and polymorphs. Fibrinogen polymerizes to the fibrin. So initially this exudated response give a massive distension of abdomen but some dilution of the toxin released into the peritoneal cavity but this is a temporary phenomenon. That's how it happens if there is a perforation of the duodenum. What happens? The contents will escape into all directions. There is a supracolic compartment. This is the infracolic compartment, this is the natural barrier, and uh, go into uh, subphrenic spaces, paracolic gutters, pelvis, interloop spaces, left paracolic gutter, left sub um, uh, left uh, subphrenic spaces is spread all over the body. Once there is obstructive variety of acute appendicitis, what will happen? The, the, as, as this picture depicts. So, this uh, escape of content under pressure. You can see the pressure and uh, see the flame. So, content escape rapidly and small as uh, this the contents are from the cecum contain large number of microorganisms. This is polymicrobial infection spread to the whole of the peritoneal cavity in very soon. Some words about the pathophysiology. The peritoneum become edematous, hypremic, covered with fibrin as we have been talking. And you know, very soon there will be uh, uh, perit uh, peritacalis because as a protective barrier, as we know, peristalsis lead to dissemination of infection. So as a protective measure by nature, the gut stops its activity. This is, uh, so there is absent peristalsis, dormant distends, there is a toxemia, meaning toxins are very rapidly. As we know, the peritoneal surface is very much absorptive cuboidal epithelium, single layer, 
absorptive surface area. That's why the peritoneal cavity is used for the peritoneal dialysis. So, peritoneal surface is very much absorptive. When it's been inflamed, it becomes more absorptive. So, the toxin which are released, so the surface area of the peritoneum lining of someone is equal to the skin surface area that one can imagine how big the surface area is which can absorb the toxin into the generalized circulation. So that's why toxemia and septicemia is eventually very rapid phenomena in acute peritonitis. In all cases of sepsis in books and literature, the classic example, uh, exemplary um, uh, condition is acute peritonitis because here the absorption to the generalized circulation is very rapid. So toxemia means toxins present in the bloodstream very rapidly. Septicemia means the multiplication of the microorganism in the bloodstream. Endotoxemia, the tox they are uh, endotoxins in the blood. The hypovolemia is eventually will be hypovolemia. Why this hypovolemia? Because patient is not eating anything. There's a lot of vomiting, there's a hypermetabolic state, there's a third space fluid loss, and there's the massive distension of the gut because of the ileus, all adding up to the hypovolemia. And then ultimately, this toxemia will lead up to the disseminated intravascular coagulation, and multi organ dysfunction syndrome can lead to a fatal condition. Physiological disturbances are the plasma loss into the inflamed area as we were talking third spacing third space fluid loss water and electrolytes uh, disturbances are there there's a water loss electrolytes disturbances may be there is a hyponatremia hypokalemia because of the vomiting large areas of the vasodilation lead to a lot of fluid space uh, third spacing and that, that lead to uh, cold peripheries and there's a hypotension Toxic effect of the microorganisms and lead to cardiopulmonary compromise. So this is a classic outcome into the septic shock. Septic shock, the classic example is peritonitis. The clinical features, the toxic look, typical hypocritic face, circulatory insufficiency as we've been talking because of the fluid loss, dehydration, um, and then uh, the cardiopulmonary uh, depression constrictive peripheries and drum like tender abdomen symptoms and signs of causative agent acute appendicitis had typhoid perforation have whatsoever the symptoms and signs of uh, the causative agent maybe there maybe a trauma maybe a urinal ulcer perforation uh, the symptom the signs of causative agent may be there it is important Abdominal pain, the feature will point towards the diagnosis. Classically, if how can we differentiate between the two common, two or three common causes of uh, secondary bacterial peritonitis is the abdominal uh, uh, perforated adrenal ulcer, typhoid perforation, and acute appendicitis. In acute appendicitis, the pain starts in the peri area, shift to the right leg fossa, and then afterward the pain spread to the whole of the abdomen and there is a fever as well. But what happens in duodenal ulcer perforation, the patient is usually taking steroid or anti-inflammatory, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, maybe a patient of peptic ulcer disease already, suddenly develops pain in the epigastrium which spreads to the whole abdomen. Feature, fever is not a feature in the initial 24 to 48 hours. Then how come the typhoid perforation mean typhoid fever there is a history of fever for a week or so and then abdominal starts abdominal pain which become worse and suddenly spread to the whole of, whole of abdomen. And history when there is a fever first and then abdominal pain develops and then it is called more in the favor of typhoid fever if the patient has a pain first which then spreads to the whole abdomen and then fever develops it is acute appendicitis perforation that's why history of is important so this is uh, good to remember so crates so what to we need to ask about the history 
site and the duration so from where the pain starts and what is the duration onset onset and uh, sudden and the gradual characteristics bulky pain shock pain dull pain or burning pain radiation to the uh, radiation to the through to the back to the angle of uh, scapula or the tip of the shoulder associated symptom maybe there timing constant or coming and going pain exaggerating and relieving factors severity and two other useful question about the pain as have you had a similar pain previously what do you think could be the causing pain so this is good to remember to ask don't miss these question when patient present with acute abdominal condition about the pain and associated symptoms is to be continued associated symptom chi bowel chi bowel last opened bowel habits uh, this absolute constipation diarrhea bleeding per rectum hematemesis melina dyspepsia symptoms of vomiting any urinary symptoms like dysuria hematuria urgency frequency gynecological history is very important in female normal cycle lnp and other dysmenorrhea menorrhagia and pv discharge fever appetite weight loss and distension history must be asked any previous abdominal investigation and finding should be asked other component of the history should not be missed the past medical history could be patient have having flare up or complication of the known condition known diverticular disease previous peptic ulcer disease known gallstones drug history is important the patient is taking steroid peptic ulcer disease or acute pancreatitis similarly the uh, social history is alcoholic and pancreatitis is important the classic symptoms of acute peritonitis are abdominal pain distension absolute constipation vomiting fever abdominal pain generalized abdominal pain distension absolute constipation vomiting fever so these are the, this slide showed you in the last lecture as well different sources of pain which lead to acute abdomen and ultimately to peritonitis abdominal pain the sources of abdominal pain initially it is a somatic pain uh, uh, initially it is a visceral pain which is less as like acute appendicitis i will just talk the pain start in the perimyelial region then shift to the right leg fossa then spread to the whole abdomen once the perforation similarly duodenal ulcer pain is experienced in the epigastrium and then suddenly spread to the whole of abdomen so this is how the uh, pain which was visceral in the start become parietal very soon somatic pain and then there is more severe and sharply demarcated differential diagnosis the onset progression frequency severity migration characteristics the, that's what we have just talked about uh, classic example of duodenal ulcer pain which was starts in the epigastrium then sudden pain spread to the whole of abdomen and then there is some relief of the pain after the exudation of lot of fluid because it is chemical peritonitis in the start with but once you differentiate this pain from the pain of acute appendicitis pain suddenly uh, start in the perimyelical area shift to the right leg fossa then spread to the whole of abdomen and in pain of typhoid perforation having fever for the last week or so suddenly develops pain in the abdomen which which spread to the whole of abdomen from the right leg fossa so the migration the characteristics these these are important questions so one should keep these nine region of the abdomen the so two lines inter transverse line uh, which divide these abdomen abdomen into nine region two transverse line mean transpyloric line and then the intertubercular line two vertical lines uh, which passes from the mid clavicular to the uh mid clavicular the meding wall region so we have nine region right hypochondrium epigastrium left hypochondrium you can see in this diagram the like right lumbar left lumbar umbilical hypogastrium so any pathology of the abdominal uh, examination any finding must be mentioned in relation to these so 
if we find tenderness in the epigastrium, so it must be there is a, uh, there is a tenderness in the epigastrium. There is a whole tenderness, uh, tenderness is all over the abdomen. So just what are the causes which can lead to acute abdomen in um, um, uh, relation to these nine region? Liver in the right hypogondium, there is liver, gallbladder, uh, hepatitis, gallstones, peptic ulcer, gastritis, uh, petty flexure of the colon, pathologies and lung, the basal pneumonia. In the epigastrium, you can have again hepatitis, gallstone, peptic ulcer and there is lot of repetition and overlap here, the right hypogondium and the epigastrium. And the left hypogondium is a splenic rupture, pancreas, pancreatitis, tail of the pancreas there, stomach, the splenic flexure, the lungs again. So coming to the left lumbar region, descending colon, kidney and the uh, hydronephrosis, and less overlap of the condition. Ascending colon, uh, right lumbar area again ascending colon, kidney, stones and UTI, right leg fossa, you can have a long list of condition, appendicitis, the cecum tumor, valvulus, closed loop obstruction, terminal ileitis, Crohn's disease, ovaries, pathologies, fallopian tubes, ectopic pregnancy, PID, ureteric pathologies, left ileic fossa, sigmoid colon, diverticulitis, ovaries, pathologies again, ureters, hypogastrium region, the uterus, fibroid, bladder stones, sigmoid colon, diverticulitis, so umbilical region is a small bowel obstruction, ischemia, aortic leakage, a, A, A. So, the briefly to remember, so one should keep these things in calm whenever you come across with acute condition, particularly in reference to these nine abdominal regions. In examination, the inspection is important to know the whether the abdomen is moving with respiration or not. Distension, symmetry is important and then distension, previous scars of the surgery, palpation, point of maximum tenderness, features of peritonitis, localized and generalized peritonitis, guarding, rigidity, tenderness, rebound tenderness and they are all important. Any mass palpable, specific signs to Rossing sign, Murphy sign, Cullen sign, greater, these are all should be kept in mind. Any pigmentation, any percussion, the shifting dullness may be there and there is a hyper, um, hyper resonant tympanic node because a lot of gas in the peritoneal cavity. Uh, the absent gut sound will be there in most of the condition with peritonitis because this toxemia lead to ileus. Clinical signs from general examination toxic look, tachycardia, tachypnea shock mean hypotension shallow respiration still silent abdomen what do you mean by still not moving with respiration and absent sound mean its gut activity is not still silent abdomen very important point in favor of acute peritonitis this is a tenderness rebound tenderness Re when you palpate this pain when you Release your hand is more pain, this rebound tenderness. Rigidity and guarding means abdominal muscle, they are stiff. Board like rigidity in established acute peritonitis. Signs of localized peritonitis may be there once they are limited to the localized infection. Uh, shifting dullness on percussion note, the free fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Rectal tenderness is there on rectal examination, should not be missed and absent gut sounds I will be talking the silent abdomen. So this is the sequence and the finding of examination. When you percuss the upper border of liver that may be percussion is shifted downward. Classic Hippocratic faces, sunken eyes, drawn and advanced peritonitis, established advanced peritonitis, sunken eyes, drawn anxious face, cold clammy skin, hypotension, oliguria and urea. So you will find typically these patients with nasogastric tube in mouth breathers, lot of toxic look, dehydration. Investigation which should be done and will help in 
not only the diagnosis but resuscitation of the CBC, TLC will be high, blood urea, culture, electrolytes, ABGs, liver function test, platelet count, they are all important but the most important investigation is X-ray abdomen and direct posture. An ultrasound may help to find the fluid in the peritoneal cavity. This X-ray is important. You find this X-ray mostly in the OSPI examination. X-ray chest showing the free gas under the right dome of diaphragm. You can have the crescenteric shadow. Free gas under the right dome of diaphragm and the liver. That means pneumoperitoneum, perforation of the hollow viscous. Either trauma, either any pathology, duodenal ulcer perforation, typhoid perforation lead to free gas under the right dome of diaphragm. So this is diagnostic of peritonitis, whatsoever the cause. Very, very important first line investigation for the diagnosis. X-ray chest and erect posture. The treatment is gen general care and resuscitation. Neutralization of local source, peritoneal lavage, post care. Generalized care and resuscitation mean these patients must be resuscitated promptly with IV fluids to white bore IV lines and Hartman solution should be started immediately till the reports of electrolytes and acid based balance come, ABGs come. So put in a nasogastric tube to decompress the upper GI. Put in a Foley's catheter, indwelling Foley's catheter to monitor the urinary output. Adequate urine output reflects good hydration. Oxygen, if the patient requires oxygen and antibiotics should be broad spectrum antibiotics should you cover polymicrobial infection like gram negatives and anaerobes should be covered with the prompt antibiotics. Anti-inflammatory may be given and other supportive drugs may be given but the treat prompt res intravascular resuscitation and upper GI decompression in dwelling Foley's catheter they are must. Airway should be taken care of once their patient is in critical condition. Neutralization of the local source once then the prepare the patient for the surgery. Midline laparotomy should be carried out once the need for operation has been decided so there's no time should be wasted and midline laparotomy uh, aspirate all the toxic fluid present in the peritoneal cavity, explore the whole abdomen, identify the pathology and treat it. Neutralization of the local source. What are you going to do? If there is a peritoneal uh, duodenal ulcer perforation, Graham patch repair should be done. If, if there is a stomach perforation, it should be repaired with biopsies. If there is a perforation of the terminal ileum for the typhoid fever, it should be repaired. And if there is appendicitis, appendicectomy should be done. So after doing this corrective measure, there is a thorough peritoneal wash with plenty of saline solution so that to neutralize and lavage the peritoneal cavity, put two, two or three drains for the post-operative drainage and post-operative care should be continued with IV uh, fluids, IV antibiotics and uh, close monitoring upper GI decompression and invalence for this catheter. Prognosis. Mortality is fairly well. Or sepsis, mean continued sepsis, prolonged ileus. If after surgery ileus is not settling, it means continued intraperitoneal sepsis. Electrolytes imbalance mean they are not corrected easily. Renal failure, a adult respiratory disease syndrome, multi organ breakdown, untrained intra peritoneal collections and bone marrow suppression they are all bad prognostic sign and affect the prognosis badly what are the complications of peritonitis residual intraperitoneal collections apart from all the complications we have talked in the previous slides residual abscesses the common site are the pelvis pelvic abscess subphrenic collections Paracolic gutters, right alic fossa, and internal loop abscess. These are the common sites of intraperitoneal collections. These should must be kept in mind. When there is a persistent uh, deterioration of condition, persistent fever, 
and persistent rise of leukocytosis so these should, complications should be kept in mind and should be trained accordingly thank you very much for passive listening we'll give you the uh, assignment once the lecture will be over the next time we'll be talking about the specific type of peritonitis thank you very much